Welcome back to Roche Roche TV. I'm your host, Roche Roche, and here I am with artist, activist, mentor, and friend, Abram Moya Jr. Thank you. Uh, my name is Abram Moya Jr. I'm an artist, curator, and coordinator, uh, and activist also. I would like to dedicate this video to a woman who has been involved and active in the community for many years. Her name is Gloria Arianas. Uh, Gloria Arianas first started out with the Brown Berets in East LA and created the first uh, free clinic on Whittier Boulevard. And from that free clinic, you now have Ultimed. But now she has been working with, the, and uh, very active with the Native American and indigenous crowd, and especially the, uh, the Native Americans from here in California. Unfortunately, she has been very ill, but she is a surviving uh, warrior. Get well, and the Great Spirit is helping you out, Gloria. Uh, my work, I've been an artist for over uh, 55 years. Uh, I've been an activist for over 50 years and uh, a community activist. I've uh, graduated from uh, uh, Cerritos Community College and graduated from California State University of Fullerton in, in, back in 72. Art has been very much my passion. Uh, it helped me out through my college years. Uh, even when I was working full time with the Southern California Gas Company, uh, I was also doing artwork at the same time and doing gallery shows. Uh, I've been referred to as a muralist lately, but in actuality, I'm just an artist. Uh, I'm not a muralist. I was, uh, I was taught about the fundamentals of art and uh, uh, the fine arts with uh, Miguel Vasquez, who was my mentor and a uh, very good friend and brother. And I've known and worked with him for over 30 years. We've done old shows throughout Orange County, some in LA and uh, in San Jose and in Long Beach. Uh, also, Emigio uh, showed me how to uh, work in the politics of gallery showing. Now, muralism, after Emigio had passed away in 2014, uh, Emigio Vasquez's son, Higgy, uh, introduced me to the Santa Ana Artist Coalition, which I became a part of at, uh, back in 2014. My first mural there was uh, working in the alley uh, with Moises Camacho and the, and the regular group. Moises Camacho, I, can, I acknowledge him in this and uh, thank him for teaching me the main fundamentals of muralism. I worked with him for over two years and so we did murals uh, such as the uh, uh, Siempre Santana, uh, that's on the back of the Godinas High School. And I was very proud and, and privileged and honored to work with uh, uh, Moises, uh, where he taught me some of the fundamentals of, uh, of muralism. But I've also done and curated over eight uh, art gallery shows with Santa Ana College and uh, Orange County Center for Contemporary Arts, and with uh, La Artista Marina Aguilera. Uh, I also was uh, uh, involved in uh, helping out to, to develop the Chicano Heritage Month. Yeah. That's, that's just a brief statement of what I've done. Now, there's a lot more to it, but... Uh... Yeah, so if you'll join us, we'll, we'll be taking a look at the artwork of Abram Moya Jr. Here we are in Abram's studio, and can you um, explain to us a few of your artworks? Yes, welcome to my studio. And uh, first of all, I'd like to say that uh, my style is not the uh, status quo type of style that uh, you'll see with a lot of Chicano artists. Uh, I'm a Chicano and I'm an artist, but I have a different complete style in my work. I don't do a Colombian art, or, but I do do portraits and a lot of uh, uh, political style type of arts that have an explanation or that makes you want to think. And uh, uh, see what, what's going on. Uh, an example of that is if you uh, have a, a picture of a, a young Ethiopian child that is starving, and then next to it you'll see a woman coming out of an eye, which is temptation. And up on the top you have one with the skull coming out of a city that's actually uh, in uh, Lebanon, and it's called uh, war. Uh, so you go down on my you see a little girl picking a flower, and it uh, and it's a you know it's a little Anglo girl, or it could be any young girl, and uh, you'll see a tank coming through. And on the sky, you if you look real close, you see the words "why," and then uh, next to it, you'll see another one uh, uh, of a tree with two people, and they're the indigenous people holding it up. But it's the title of it: uh, 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 the pro uh, the false prophet has risen, and he's holding. Uh, the word profit is P-R-O-F-I-T, like in money. And you see the seven beasts. Excuse me, the title is The Beast Has Risen. And it has the money up there. And then, you know, as you go along, you see 
a hand with temptation trying to reach out. Again, these all these six that I've shown you right here are not with the style of uh, any particular uh, style of, uh, uh, it's just my own personal style. Of course, you'll see Amiga Vasquez, who was my uh, a mentor, and uh, he's uh, it's a portrait of him. Emigio has been very good as my mentor, and another mentor of mine is Carlos Callejo, uh, who's uh, one of the international muralists. And on top of that, you'll see a a, uh, uh, a oh god, what do you call him? It's for a mural that Emigio had done, and that is the uh, uh, Moquet is that it's up at uh, it's at Anaheim by the uh, Salvation Army, which he does a history of the Chicano movement up there. That's Emigio's. And the top of that one is another small one, a mural that he did in uh, Cypress Street uh, in Orange. And, of course, a little painting of Emigio's down there. But these are the type of styles. And then over here in the corner, you'll see Che Guevara. There's my uh, political influence in it, which I have a lot of admiration for him. Uh, a lot of people say, hey, well, he was a killer. And I said, well, that's, you know, everybody has their uh, her uh, heroes. But, uh, and uh, they people that they admire, I admire Che. Below that, when you go down, you see Reyes de Herina and Ralph Ramirez from the Brown Berets. Their inspiration is because of their assertiveness into the uh, Chicano movement. Uh, he was, uh, that's where my more Chicanoism comes in, where I would do Chicano art in that aspect. But uh, when you go, go on down further, you see the, again, uh, where I drew with the uh, uh, the young girl with the with a stocking, and that's when I was with the gas company. We would donate food to these families, and uh, she was one part of the people that we donated. So I saw the photo and I liked it a lot, and I called it joy. She just received her gift. But as you go across, and you'll see some other one, a pastel of some skulls. Again, my fantasy, my mind is just you know, uh, working in a different way, and it's no particular style, but my own, with the uh, skulls coming out of the flowers. And then, of course, I'll go down. If you want to go across, you'll see these three uh, uh, people in a little small town from uh, a little pueblito that, from Mexico uh, called La Huerta Jalisco. And uh, that I called Los Tias. Uh, that's where my wife was from, and that's where I got married. And uh, over 44 years ago, and uh, we go across to uh, some of the people, homeboys that I used to work with in the Barrio Placencia and South Placencia. And this is house is uh, Turis Canton. We have the house in Old Town Placencia called Turis Canton. Uh, that uh, was, uh, that young man was very uh, helpful. His name's Arthur Acevedo. He was very helpful when I came in uh, to work as an activist, and he worked with me, and we stuck uh, stuck it out together ooh, for probably about five to 10 years. And then we go down as uh, I had an admiration and my wife likes this one is uh, the mother Teresa holding the, the child. And uh, that was just, uh, you know, uh, I was taking this class just for the sake of taking this for practice. And uh, I just started working on her face and, and the hands and stuff. Uh, the teacher was kind of uh, amazed because I wasn't going through the standard procedures they do. I already had some about 10 years professional artwork. Uh, doing and I started differently, and they were all, "Oh, this is nice." Huh? Yeah, yeah. It's just... And then this this one down here is a is a pencil drawing that I did for the gas company for their uh, uh, baseball team, uh, which they used, and uh, for t-shirt design. It's just a picture that I got, I found, and I just fixed it up, and I, it's all pencil, color pencil. Majority of these that I showed you are watercolors except for the skeletons coming out of the flowers, the skulls, that's a pastel. Uh, the Mother Teresa one is also a pastel. Uh, then we go over to here, like I stated, the, this, this, this hand is uh, watercolors. Uh, up here, the one, the temptation with the woman coming out of the eye and it glows in the dark, uh, that's also uh, watercolors. We go over here and you'll see the, the skeletons dancing under the moonlight, which is one of my more recent paintings. This one and the other one with the, uh, like the butterfly or the skulls coming out of the flowers are my two more, more recent paintings. And it's just an idea that's coming out that I came out of my head and uh, having them dance. And uh, 
It could be dedicated to Dia de los Muertos dancing. Uh, I've done some other ones uh, that did for Dia de los Muertos. You'll see later on. And this one up here is called Vocational Training. That's a print. I sold the original, and I did show the original uh, in different shows and exhibitions. And I sold it, but the guy that bought it put it uh, into uh, uh, a storage, and it got rained on. So I made a copy and made a print. And the unfortunate part, and here's the secret, and everybody's going to get to know, the print made it backwards. And you can see the lettering up there backwards in there. As we go over here, towards the end, again, it's more my political influence and, and thought of what's going on in society, which is, there's a lot of these are dealing with that. Uh, it's called the corporate mercenary. Uh, Emilio Vasquez gave it the title of the corporate mercenary. And it's just of a man without a face, but you can't know distinctive face. With, and he's got his big old gun there. Uh, with sitting on top of children or youth trying to grab a bone on there. And if you see right over here, you'll see the edible toxics. And that's, this is a, a thing, a question on uh, dealing with uh, uh, just life in general and uh, what people have to struggle for. Uh, one of the things that, uh, that with, if you notice, is like even with the uh, young lady in the tank, it's all with the youth and even with the Ethiopian child. Uh, and then over down below, the Filipino insurgent. It deals with young people having to fight, having to struggle, just like what's going on in, uh, in uh, the Middle East where over uh, 5,000 young people have died for no good reason or they become warriors or they become uh, uh, terrorists, as they call them, or something or other, but they're not. And then here, I had this vision of doing a uh, kind of like a religious semi-religious uh, uh, painting, kind of strange and different. What's in color is the religion, is the faith that people, that, well, I wouldn't call it faith, but mostly the evil, the dollar with a snake. And uh, uh, over here, the guy that sold, uh, sold off Jesus uh, to put him on the cross, uh, Judas. And then, then you have the beast with the, uh, uh, the, uh, the whore of Babylon. This is standing right there. All that is in color because that is what we're living in. What's in black and white is what's the reality. People will do anything for money or to get, uh, even sacrifice their child, uh, you know, for the gold and for the, for the color part of it. Uh, so it's a kind of like a, kind of a, to some people be strange and some people be controversial about it. But again, it's, uh, it's just a feeling, just a thought. You know, and so I put those thoughts onto the paper, onto the painting. Um, blue flames in here, uh, you know, and it's kind of a different uh, type of painting. Again, it's not this typical Chicano artist type painting, and I don't do that. You know, everybody does that. Uh, I'm not Mr. Status Quo. In this one here, I did this painting in a watercolor class. I took this watercolor class with Mr. Martinez at, uh, at Fullerton College just for the, because uh, I was going for my graphic certificate, uh, which I did achieve. But uh, everybody was doing uh, nice islands and seascapes with uh, watercolors. And I said, oh, I'm going to do something more, you know, intense. So I got this picture of this young child. And he's Palestinian to boot from Gaza. And, and this is what happens to him, the war. Uh, the Palestinian with the gun, the young people. And if you notice way over here in the corner, you have a gravestone. It says, on the gravestone, it says youth. And that's, what's, uh, that's what uh, this one is. It's, dealing, dealing. it's not being pro-Palestinian or not pro-Palestinian or pro this or pro that. It's being that how youth have been put into a position that they have to defend themselves with guns and rifles, and they get sucked into the wars of throughout the world, uh, like the Ethiopian child uh, from Ethiopia and uh, the Filipino over here, uh, insurgent, and, uh, you know, it, my questions of religion and, and the survival of, uh, you know, the, uh, of, uh, the hands trying to reach, reach out. But, you know, I do do some nice, pretty stuff, too. You'll see those a little bit later, you know, but uh, some nice uh, 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 paintings, uh, as that. I noticed you saying that 
you don't or that your artwork is very different than Chicano art. Can you explain for the audience what is the difference between Chicano art and your art? Or if Chicano art can even be defined? Chicano art can be defined. And there is a lot of big difference. Uh, mine is more of a, a contemporary, uh, realistic, uh, moving forward. Whereas Chicano art, is, a lot of it is dealing with uh, uh, using the Colombian type style. You see a lot of Aztecs and temples. I do have a, one with... Uh, a pyramid in there uh, and flowers. Uh, a lot of it is just like a, a dating back and connecting with the uh, with our uh, ancestry of uh, the Aztecs and the uh, and the Olmecs and the Mayans, which is great. I think it's beautiful. You know, you cannot do it, but sometimes it gets overdone, and uh, a lot of times we have to move forward as far as techniques and styles. Uh, we're not just one particular, you know, as a Chicano, we're not just one particular way. I am a Chicano 100%, um, but I'm an artist. So that makes me a Chicano artist. But my style is not the same as, uh, you know, I don't, it's not that I don't want to paint low riders, which are beautiful cars, but I wish not to. That's my choice. And because I don't do it doesn't mean I'm not an artist or a Chicano artist. Uh, I have been questioned about that. and. Uh, you know, a lot of times they don't accept my art because it doesn't have a lot of that. But mine deals with reality, realism. Uh, I like uh, like uh, uh, Greg Stone's or Emigo's. Even Emigo's work, if you look at it, is very realistic and very contemporary. But in the way that he does his work, uh, Chicano art has more of a flow to it too. Uh, as far as Mexican artists are concerned, mine like Jose Clemente Orozco. Because it's vibrant, and, and uh, that's what I like to put out in here. And I'm more of a political artist, I like to say, uh, you know, which uh, tries to bring out uh, what's going on in society as a whole, not just with Chicanos, but with everybody and uh, uh, with all people uh, as a whole right now. Uh, we have to look at it as uh, in a broader scale. From what you're saying is that Chicano art maybe focuses more on Aztec, Mayan, or lowrider kind of subject matter but you can still be a Chicano person, and but your art's focus on something completely different. And so you can be a Chicano making art versus just a Chicano focusing on Chicano art. Exactly. Because, you know, the thing is this, is that when they talk about Chicano, what the first thing they do, do is look at, is they look at uh, Cholo or gangbang. And we're not that. We have been proven in, only in recently that a Chicano is an American of Mexican descent that is uh, everyone or that's American of Mexican descent. It could be a surfer. It could be an astronaut. It could be a, a musician. It could be the queen of rock and roll like Linda Ronstadt. She's a Chicana. Or uh, one of the main folk singers that changed the, uh, the music world like uh, John Baez. That's, those are Chicanos. Uh, to, it's just not... You know, I love the music of uh, uh, Santana and Malo and Tierra and, and El Chicano, but I also love the music of uh, of uh, Joan Baez and, and, and some of the music that she has sang. It's not the same thing. I mean, a lot of people you're not going to hear playing in the cars. Uh, I'm more into in my even in my music. I'm more into uh, uh, more mellow type of uh, music. Uh, general, uh, uh, I forgot what the name of it is, but uh, uh, I like good mellow and good sound music but that's a whole different other thing but that uh, that's you know you could be a chicano doing that uh even in during the psychedelic era look who were the top musicians jerry garcia of the grateful dead patty santos and val fuentes of a group called it's a beautiful day they're you know uh, uh what's his name from uh, the drummer from uh canned heat he's mexicano you know, and a lot of people don't realize that how much influence uh, uh, Chicanos have. Uh, if you look at a lot of the uh, cartoons and animations, you see a lot of Chicano names in there. You know, it doesn't have to always be, uh, and I'm going to use this stereotype, a cactus with a guy with a big old sombrero sitting down there looking like he's sleeping. A Chicano is something that is, uh, comes from the heart and, and you, you, you know, something you respect. Uh, and that, that word respect goes for all. And we have to respect all. I respect the artists like I've seen some of these young artists do 
that are completely different. They might be like a, a tattoo type of artist or whatever, but you respect them because at least they're trying to something more positive. Uh, a Chicano is somebody that's to be positive. And it's time that we start being looked at as positive, not as gangbangers or, you know, uh, graffiti artists, uh, but graffiti. Well, excuse me, I shouldn't say graffiti. Graffiti, just to, as a, uh, you know, to name something, to destroy some pieces of artwork. There are some great graffiti artists, but not to be put on top of other artwork. Yeah. And I wrote this poem back in the late 70s during the anti-war movement, but which it still works to get, uh, works for today, still means a lot today. And it refers to the other, these two paintings that I did of the young girl with the tank and uh, the city of war. And it's called Why? Why is the world at war? Is it for peace or is it for more? They said there would be no more, but there was that one last war. Soon there came a knocking on young people's doors, for it was the man of war. Fathers wondered why. Mothers started to cry while their young were going out to fight. Young blood was being spilled. Communities were being killed. Pockets were being filled. While politicians' wars became young people's wars. So again, why is the world at war? Is it for peace or is it for more? And this is where I kind of stand, uh, you know, in, in dealing with a lot of the, uh, with my politics and, and my paintings. And that's why I question. And when you do your artwork, something like this, you want to question. You want people to look at it and question. You want to, add, for them to ask themselves, what is that? You know, why is it? Why is that woman coming out of the eye? What is the temptation? And if you notice, she's carrying an apple. That's Eve with the apple. Thanks for explaining the difference between Chicano and um, in the artwork. And I think in today's um, environment, there's a lot of people that, you know, they, they want to be Chicano and they have to be a specific way or else they, they don't fit in in the Chicano world. I noticed that half of your studio is artwork and the other half is like a little library. Can you explain to us about your library? Sure. Uh, before I do that, you see a lot of skulls around here. And this is just to point out, I'm not into death. And even though I did them some skeletons, I think that's fun. That is really fun. And I like to make them into some, everybody makes them into death and evil and stuff. I like to make it into more fun type of stuff. And, you know, there's modding and colors and different things. They even, my skulls even glow in the dark. But anyway, my books, um, I have a, a bachelor's of arts degree in sociology. So I kept a lot of my books on sociology and study. of. So, uh, I also have an associated arts degree in sociology. So that's where a lot of these books. But I got involved with the uh, activism, with the anti-war movement, uh, with the SDS. And one of my things my father told me is whatever you're going to get involved with, know what you're getting involved with. Learn about the history, know the history and stuff. So what I did is, I did, I, you see a little picture of the Black Panther Party. So I got a book on Black Panther parties up there. Uh, I like to I see the history of uh, the, the, the active uh, movement of the civil rights movement of Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, uh, Stokely Carmichael, uh, the Black Panther Party, us, uh, uh, Kathleen Cleaver, uh, Angela Davis. In fact, I even went to an Angela Davis uh, 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 a rally with Sammy Davis Jr. was playing in Quincy Jones. Uh, so that's, that's some of the books that I have here. Also in my political ideology. So you wanted to know what you're reading about. But like I stated, I like Che Guevara and I have history books on Che Guevara. Uh, I have uh, history books on art. On All this is dealing with artwork here. Uh, different art art periods. And here again, uh, Che and some more art books, uh, world history on photography. And then of course, some uh, drawing books and uh, watercolors and, and uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, the body. I have some more books on the body, but they're nudes, but I put them away because I have grandkids and I don't want them to come grab them. Uh, and then I, you know, on Chicano books on it, I have the books on the winds that sweat Mexico, very good book. Uh, the Mexican American heritage. Uh, I have one, I think, Arreste Herina in here, up here, and Occupied America, uh, Ando Sangrando. I have that book, and that's on the East LA riots. And the one on Bert Corona, which I think is, I recommend to everybody. And those National Geographics up there, those were Emigio's books. Uh, and he was very infatuated and, and liked the history of uh, World War II. So I have the whole World War II 
na- uh, 1940s uh, National Geographics up there. And then I also, just for those people who, you know, don't think I'm religious and I don't care, you know, anyway, uh, have the Bible. I've read them all, the world history. So if you're going to know something, you got to study it and read about it. Don't just open your mouth and just say, hey, uh, I have these books. I do more, a little bit more research now on the computer age instead of doing it. But those are my research books, my art books, uh, and uh, my political books. And I go back and re- go back and reference it. In fact, one of these books in the Chicano art book, Amigo stuff is in it. You know, so uh, I like reading. Uh, uh, you know, if I'm going to get involved with something, I'll read about it. So I'll know about it. Like right now, I know a lot about Bert Corona. Thank goodness I got to work with the man and I know the man and I've read his history and I know his son, his adopted son. That guy is great. In fact, I like him better than Cesar Chavez. Bert Corona was a, uh, a labor activist and a community activist. Uh, he started back in 1938 in, uh, from Texas. But uh, this man was a, a top-notch organizer in uh, for the labor movement. When Orange County even had their big old strike uh, over here, he was involved with that uh, in, the, in the late 30s. Uh, he was involved in, in Placencia with uh, some of the local people in organizing. He helped organize MAPA, Mexican American Political Association, and, uh, you know, the, for the community because of the racism. He felt the racism and saw the racism in Texas and, and here in Los Angeles and in California. And uh, he has been involved with a lot of the, uh, uh, the Sleepy Lagoon incident in the 40s. Uh, he was, uh, in fact... Memor- Memories of a Chicano History, the Life and Narrative of Corona by Garcia is a great book to uh, read. Anybody that's involved with the community can read this. And even in this book, Cesar Chavez called Bert Corona his mentor. Uh, Bert Corona was not only involved with the Sleepy Lagoon, but it was in the 50s. He was uh, uh, blacklisted uh, when he was in the military. He was blacklisted because he was a labor organizer. Uh, he, he also formed and worked with the undocumented workers, and he's known as the godfather of the uh, immigration rights movement, along with uh, Chole Alatore, who is the grand, uh, the godmother of the uh, of the uh, uh, immigration rights movement. And uh, he formed a group called Hermandad, and then along with the students in the late sixties and early seventies, they formed a group called Casa Centro Acción Social Autónomo, and uh, they uh, they worked together, and that's when I started working with them in the early 70s. Uh, in fact, uh, I did my first organization against the war in Vietnam, a Chicano uh, rally, I did at Cal State Fullerton. Uh, I brought in Bert Corona to speak, and he spoke. Uh, you can find that in, in, the, uh, in the history of Bert Corona. And uh, I've known Bert at that time and worked with him at Casa in Santa Ana for a long time. Uh, we did a thing where... Uh, in Santa Ana, the Unified School District at that time in the 70s, uh, uh, took all the Spanish surnames and went to their homes to see if they had the green cards. And uh, they didn't, uh, if they didn't have the green cards, they would put it on a different list and they would be sent into the immigration. Uh, when I was working with CASA, we put the stop to that, uh, along with, uh, you know, Bert Corona's doing it. And Bert Corona also spoke in one of the first uh, immigration rights uh, uh, rallies that we had in Santa Ana. And, uh, but Bert Corona's, uh, work with, uh, labor, uh, mainly with the longshoremen has been great. Uh, uh, that's, I should get more specific on what I mean by great, but he was out there and he's always done it. When Robert Kennedy, uh, uh, won the election, the primary election just before he was assassinated, he recognized Bert Corona as one of the organizers, uh, for him to get, uh, and, and support to get uh, Robert Kennedy uh, voted. So, Bert Corona has had a hand in, in a, many of the stuff on it. He's, to me, he is the, the, the grandfather of the Chicano movement. He is part of, uh, and helped create the Chicano movement uh, back in, from the late 30s. Uh, Cesar Chavez, I would say, is a product of that. Uh, and the labor, even though with the United Farm Workers, even though he's got more publicity, Bert Corona was not a man of publicity, but a man of, he would uh, do a lot of the work and, and organizing behind the scenes and get things done. All right, Abram, um, show us what you got. Okay, what I have here is, remember I was talking about uh, Aztecs and so forth. I put a, a pyramid over here in the back on this painting 
um, these poinceras. The reason why I did that is, you know, that poinceras are from Mexico. They're not here established in the United States. Everybody throughout has them. And when they criticize, you know, some, some of the bad stuff that comes out of Mexico, poinceras started from Mexico. And they're beautiful flowers. And so that's why I put the pyramid over here uh, uh, to show that these are Mexican flowers. Over here again, I have one of my favorite heroes, Bert Corona, a painting that I did of him. And uh, that's, it's a watercolor. This is not the original, it's a print. The original is owned by uh, a lawyer by the name of uh, Juan Barba. And then here, this is some old, old drawings that I did back when I first started, back in the late 60s. How old were you, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, I was uh, 18. Wow. 18 or 19 years old, I remember. But anyway, that's one there. And this one is my first from a final of life drawing uh, of a nude model. And I got an A on it. And it was back in 68, 1968. So, that was, yeah, I was 19 at the time. So that was back then. And that's my first one. And then, of course, I have some ones here of my mom that I did. They didn't come out as good as I thought. That's why they're... These are over here. There's another one. The, the head angle is bad on this one. But anyway, uh, those are the ones that I have done and uh, some of the old ones. The first one, this one I have to get fixed of the final, the one I did of a final, I have to get it fixed some way or another so that way I can preserve it. Then of course I've done a lot of, uh, the one that's fun with skeletons again here is, uh, uh, this one, which is, is sold, and it was a commission job, actually, and the original one glows in the dark, and then the print, I made a big old print, about five of them, and uh, they're out, and they're sold and gone. Uh, I plan to make a couple more prints of these. So, and uh, then you have, again, with fun with skeletons, dancing, and then here's another one. Why did it, this guy walking through the cemetery like this? Who knows? He's, you know, just fun with him. Why is it so important to you to have a, a skeleton? It's like I said before, is everybody puts a skeleton uh, as the, uh, you know, kind of negative or mean or, you know, he's out there going to be evil. I did it for fun. Mm. Let them, you know, like they're dancing and they're having a good time. And, and uh, you know, it's, just, uh, it's not for the evil. It's just for fun. So, Abram, can you explain to us what we have here? Yes. Uh, what I want to show you first is this one here. Is a poster that I did for the 50th anniversary of the Chicano movement. And here's a picture of Gloria Arianas, uh, which, uh, again, like I said, I'd like to dedicate this video to uh, because of her long struggle and what she has been doing and struggling and working with the indigenous people. Uh, so that's Gloria Arianas. And then, of course, you have the different people, Corky, and you have, uh, 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 I started, David Sanchez and Ralph Ramirez uh, and Carlos Callejo. And Lupe Cardenas, and then down here is uh, Jorge Coqui Rodriguez. But yeah, this is a poster that was done for the 50th anniversary, uh, and which is now in the ultimate uh, Chicago collection. And before you move on, um, how close tied are you to the brown berets? Because uh, I noticed there's some brown berets on you. I, uh, I was part of the brown berets at the beginning of the 70s, and I was with them for about a couple of years. But uh, uh, Ralph Ramirez and myself are very close. I was also in the Marcha de Reconquista, which is uh, from uh, the march from Calexico to Sacramento. I, I was participant in that. And I also was at the Marcha de Justicia, the, where the one individual got killed on January 31st, 1971. Uh, that was right after the August 29th, where they had a, uh, a police riot. And the police... Uh, on the January 31st, the police shot into the crowd, injuring over 40 people and killing Gustav Montag, which uh, he was uh, from Europe and, to, and participating in the uh, anti-war demonstration of the uh, Chicano moratorium on January 31st. There is theory that there were more Chicanos that were killed, but uh, nobody verified that. But still, that there were some individuals that probably died inside the hospital. But uh, going back into my artwork is... Uh, one of the first projects that I did is, is uh, I did a, uh, a picture, or, I mean, a, a, a painting for Cafe Lido that was in uh, Lido Isle 
in a, a jazz cafe. I was asked to, and I was commissioned to, and that was the uh, painting that I did. And then I also, when I worked with the gas company, they had a, like a little uh, a newsprint paper, and they asked me to do something for them, and I did do this one called The Many Faces and uh, of Theotherm. I call them Theotherm. This is uh, The Many Faces, and this, that's the gas company employee. And then that was, uh, ooh, was back in the mid '80s. And then these, these are cool. This is just like a, I was uh, in, uh, in a class, a life drawing class, and my uh, instructor asked me, "Hey, Ava, this is a Fullerton College. Can you do one with just the colors showing the dark? It's just you know lights." And, and I did it, and I did this one, and he liked it a lot. And then uh, just for those who did, I did uh, studies too of nudes. This is one here that I did. I had another one, and the other one was at a uh, street festival, and uh, this one lady kept on touching it, and I told the lady, don't touch it. And uh, she put black, uh, bad luck on it, and uh, a wind came and it tore it, but <laughs> I gave that one away. Wait, so you were drawing a nude model in a festival? No, no, I had a picture of a nude model uh -huh. like this. And, uh, you know, as uh, part of the exhibition. And uh, the, the lady kept touching it, putting her hands on it. And I says, please don't put your hands on it. She says, what, what do you mean, here or here? She says, no, no, anywhere. So she find, when she finally left, there was a little breeze. And the breeze took it and it tore the, the, the painting. But uh, I gave it to a friend. And then this is another one I did. Uh, this is just the backside with watercolor showing the different values and stuff. Uh, the shading. And, oh. And this is one of my other original old ones that I did a long time ago and just did it with the one different color and watercolor. And these are, these are like experiments for me and playing with the colors and seeing what I could do and dealing with the shadow and shading with the face and the same thing here and then adding this and then adding a little bit of color just here or there. Uh, but uh, this is one of my old, old ones too. Uh, and uh, then we go over here. We have, this is a friend of mine, and I call it uh, uh, Summons to Reality. And uh, he just got some bad news. And so I made, he had a letter and he was, he was all bummed out. So I just painted him, it's a watercolor. And I put a Summons to Reality in the, and the poem goes, uh, uh, love and hate, rich or poor, life or death, peace or war, which is a Summons to Reality. And then uh, these two, you've, probably seen it a lot in the uh, uh, in, in Facebook. Uh, these are Las, Las Mujeres de Acción or the Women of Action uh, up on the top. Just for those who want to know who they are, and I need to have my list. Uh, that's Modesta Avila, Jovita um, Idar Vivero, and Emma Tenayu Tenayuca. The last two, these two, were from Texas, and they fought off the Texas Rangers. One was a, uh, a labor leader, an organizer, an educator. Another one was a journalist. And the Texas Rangers burned the school of one of them and uh, the newspaper of the other one. Uh, the, the middle three women is uh, Virginia Guzman, and, uh, and this other lady over here was Felices Mendez, who were very much involved in the... Uh, 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 the suit uh, of the school districts of Santa Ana and Westminster, which made change the, the ruling of a segregation in uh, school education. And they're, they're, they're the catalyst to the Brown versus Board of Education, uh, which was a Supreme Court, but it was to show and proof that uh, Chicanos in Orange County did make a difference in, in dealing with, uh, because of them, uh, school segregation was eliminated in California. Uh, in 1947, whereas, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, the Brown versus Board of Education was in the mid-50s. Uh, and then right in the middle is Rosa Espinosa, a good friend of mine, and she was a city councilwoman and mayor of La Habra. She received the President's Volunteer Service Award, and uh, she was educating some of the young people. If we go down further, there's Chole Aletore, was the partner of uh, Bert Corona, and then there's... Uh, Hilda Reyes, a brown beret. Uh, she was the poster girl, a post, poster woman. 
and then there's uh, uh, Dolores Huerta, and then is, uh, this is Isabel Cavalla Hernandez Rodriguez, uh, uh, the, the mother of the Rod brothers from East LA, and uh, the famous uh, uh, La Artista Marina Aguilera from Santa Ana, and then uh, another Alicia Escalante, uh, another woman who was very much involved with the uh, Chicano movement in East LA. So all these are Los Mujeres de Acción from uh, Casa and uh, United Farm Workers. Uh, that's why you have Casa over here, you have UFWC, Se Puede, and Justicia para Todos. And then here, on this one, is Las Mujeres de Justicia in OC, in Orange County. Uh, these, this picture here was taken from a United Farm Workers March, but this one here is a brown beret woman from uh, Placencia. Uh, that's the infamous Alicia Rojas, uh, Sylvia Mendez, the, the daughter of, uh, uh, of uh, the Westminster Mendez. What's the name again? <laughs> Felicides Mendez. And then down here you have Rosa Espinosa again. And then, uh, uh, oh Jesus, I can't forget remember their names. But and then this is Priscilla Bueno, one of the Mommy Patrol of uh, Placencia, and uh, uh, Josie Montoya. Uh, a community activist from uh, from uh, Anaheim. Uh, this one that I didn't remember the name, she was very much involved with the women's rights movement in Santa Ana. Uh, her last name was Vario. Okay, and this last painting down here, is I did this a while back, and it's called Por, Por Mi Vida, For My Life. Uh, this is the struggle of people, to, you know, on the other side of the border, reaching out to grab prosperity, which is a little plant. And in doing that, they, the struggles they have to go through, they bleed, their children, you know, in the faces and their struggles, but only to be stopped by uh, society with the, you have the swastika right here in the city and uh, they're being stepped upon and the, and the boot is uh, supposed to be like a goose stepping boot. boot. You see the person in the back, but uh, they're doing it for mi vida, for my life. So. Okay, this is my other uh, studio part, uh, my studio part two. Uh, the one that you saw was in the house and this one is in the garage. Uh, this is where I do a lot more of my bigger artwork and art pieces, uh, which is I'm working on one now here. Uh, it's it's going to be called, and it's not completed, but you'll see the complete one at the uh, this August at the Chicano Heritage uh, uh, Festival Month uh, at Santa Ana College upstairs in their gallery uh, on the first Saturday. And the painting is called, uh, uh, We Don't Tread, We Devour and Move Forward. Uh, it's because you'll see the snake and there's a snake in there. And then back here, you see the spirits of the people who have been very influential from uh, uh, Ivar from uh, Texas to Reste Herina, Bert Corona, Corky, Gloria Molina. There should be a lot more, but you know, you could, you could fit in, a, you know, it's overdone with a lot of people on it. And then you have the eagle here holding the snake and on the snake, it's going to have the words of Zionism, fascism, uh, racism, hate, uh, because and it's going to be going. It's not going to be distinct lettering, but it's going to be in, involved with the uh, the shape of the snake. Uh, on this wall, I plan on putting it on some uh, other faces, and I don't want to get too much in faces, but it's going to be a lot of portraits there. Uh, you're going to have uh, Vicky Castro. You're going to have De La Torre from uh, 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 Altmed. Uh, I'm going to have the uh, astronaut over here. Over here, I'm going to have some female singers like Joan Baez. Uh, I might put in Salina, and then I put in like uh, Richie Valens. Uh, so include them. But uh, on the street here, like in this red, right where you can see, this is going to be youth walking in front of this wall. This wall is going to be like a mural of, uh, of uh, people in there. And then uh, uh, here's a sidewalk, and on the street, I just might leave it like this, or I might put a nice uh, uh, vehicle or something in there. Uh, I'm not sure yet. Uh, I haven't decided, but this is going to be completed hopefully by uh, June of this year. Uh, over here is one that I started working on uh, uh, with the uh, when the Ukraine war started, but uh, uh, I kind of stopped a little bit and I'm going to make it into something different. Uh, it's just uh, when I get the urge or something to draw, like uh, this one was just something to draw. You know, I, I just got fantasy wise. Uh, I'll pop, probably put, uh, I don't know what I'm going to do there yet, uh, just whatever comes up. And then I have a, a drawing over here, painting over here, 
uh, that I've been working on little by little is a watercolor. Uh, okay, this is a painting I did of uh, Frida Kahlo, but uh, it's a watercolor. But I didn't like it, so I turned around and I redid it and I gave it to my uh, daughter. She has it now. Uh, and then here's another one that I'm doing of Frida. See, everybody does Frida. Like, yeah, I was talking about Chicano art and stuff. And when they do Frida, they always put all those flowers and stuff on it. And it's beautiful and colorful. But there's a more to it in Frida. And this is one I found a photo of. And I'm doing a charcoal of, uh, of Frida. Uh, you know, like when she's holding a gun down there. And, you know, you can, uh, the way that she's dressed is kind of, uh, you know, different and Frida Hill was always completely different than anybody. She was more progressive as a, you know, with the woman, as a woman at, from that age and that era. Uh, whereas a lot of them, like, you know, the third of Sir day. But anyway, and this one is one of Amigo that I started working on and I never finished, but, uh, I did the one, the charcoal one of Amigo and it's inside my house, which was shown earlier. But this is another one of Amigos that uh, uh, painting that I did of Amigo Vasquez. So again, my mentor. For the people that don't know who Amigo Vasquez is, who is Okay, Amigo Vasquez is considered the godfather of Chicano art in Orange County. He has done over 28 murals throughout Orange County and has shown throughout internationally. He has shown in Germany, Mexico, uh, throughout the uh, United States and uh, in, in his galleries and shows. Uh, he's a realist. Uh, and uh, you can see his murals in uh, Santa Ana College on the wall over at the Transportation Center, Irvine Valley College up there on the top. And in fact, you'll see uh, a photo of uh, uh, a plaque where I, they use my painting of uh, Amiga that I have that I showed you earlier. And you'll see him in Anaheim. His uh, paintings in Anaheim, Placencia. He is done all over. He's a uh, very very progressive in it. There was the three, some of the three main artists here, uh, muralists here in uh, Orange County were like uh, uh, Sergio Carres and uh, uh, Manuel Trujillo, I believe his name is. And uh, they started out with murals and, and uh, uh, Sergio Carres did one gigantic mural in uh, Vario Juarez, which was whitewashed because they didn't like the content of it, and which was bad. Not the content, but the people who whitewashed it. Uh, uh, was really, it was a city, I think, that whitewashed it in Fond Valley. But they took it out. But uh, Sergio Carres is also known for the sculpture that he did around the city hall. So, but uh, Amigo Vasquez was the one that did a lot more. And, uh, uh, and that's why he was uh, uh, dedicated uh, and was given the name of uh, the godfather of Chicano art in Orange County. Uh, he was also the creator of uh, Empanada uh, in uh, Orange and also the Orange County Latino Artist Network which I was part of for the, until uh, Miguel passed away. And we've uh, done a lot of shows in, 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 in dedication to Amigo. So that's who Amigo Vasquez is in a, in a nutshell. This goes with first to Avian after the Cuban Revolution, because he went through all kinds of other uh, countries. And fought, but when he participated in the Cuban Revolution, and he suggested to uh, Fidel and to Raul Castro that you don't need the United States and you don't need Russia. If you are going to be a revolutionary country, be the example. Work with a Latin American country. He even states that in in in, uh, in uh, motorcycle diaries that if, if the Latin American countries were ever to uh, unite together, they have all the resources and all the 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 economics there. They don't need Russia or United States to uh, support them. And that's what I liked about Che. And Che was a, a true-hearted international revolutionary. He fought in Africa. He fought in in uh, Bolivia. He fought in uh, uh, Guatemala. Uh, he was uh, he's, he was all up and down, and uh, for the people's rights and the workers' rights. Uh, in fact, uh, I talked to this. I used to work for Coca Cola, and there was a Sol Cubano there. And I questioned him, and I asked him, "Hey, uh, did you like uh, Fidel?" Oh no, Fidel Castro, no. Oh, mm. caca, caca. And then Paul said, "What about Che Guevara?" Oh yes, we loved him. I go, "Why?" And he goes, "Well, you see when." Fidel would come into town, he'd have all these signs and stuff. But when Che came into town, you didn't know it. But then you turn around when you're working out in the cane, he's right there next to you, working with you. And that's what I liked about Che, is he worked with the people. Sure, he did some drastic stuff, but you show me one revolutionary re revolution in the war throughout the United States and even in the world where there was, you know, no the drastic stuff that has, didn't happen. But Che to me is a, is a hero. It's like Emiliano Zapata. 
The same thing, the Plan de Ayala that he came out with, very high uh, in, uh, in, the, in the way that he's doing it. In fact, somebody tried to compare him with Marxist Leninism, but you can't. He didn't even know what Marxist Leninism was. But he did do this one plan with the sharing of the, of the, of the land, and uh, he was a dedicated revolutionary. And it was like the Tupamaros of Uruguay, the same thing there. These are the revolutionary groups that are sincere and not out for themselves or opportunists on it. Uh, you know, you can have them, you have like the, uh, the, in the Chicano movement, who are the sincere ones here? Of course, Bert Perona, you know, I'm going to say that. And then there was Reyes de Herina, Corky Gonzalez, the Brown Berets. Then you had the women, the Black Panther Party, the Young Lords. You know, there's a lot of groups that were out there as far as uh, whether underground or Chicano Liberation Front. Yeah, they were there, but these other ones were more and they did something. They were positive. Thank you for coming with us through Abram's studio. Abram, I'm extremely appreciative to be able to call you my friend. Thank you for allowing the audience to come into your home. Do you have any final words? Yes, I do. When I first started getting involved with artwork back in, when I was young, it's like when Amigo and I were talking, and I first met Amigo and we were talking about artwork. I told him, you know what, Amigo? I said, uh, I've always wanted to do an art show. I talked to some of the other artists at the beginning, uh, back when I started at Cerritos College. And I was always just, you know, they were always disappointing to me. Uh, they were always putting me down for it. And uh, they were not uh, excited about it or pushing. And Emilio reached out and he says, I'm going to put you in one. And he did. And I was showing with him for a long time. And he kept, kept me under his wing. He mentored me. He showed me, he worked with me, he criticized and gave me positive and negative critiques of my artwork and what, how I can improve. I saw this and then when working with, as a community activist and working with youth, I saw how the city and, the, and, the, and uh, other groups, how they tend to treat the youth. And so when I started working with, uh, in this art, I wanted to get more youth involved into the art field. Uh, so I started working with certain individuals and started mentoring some of them and hopefully to, for them to do better, to give them that chance. The youth of today need that break, not for money purposes, not for fame, but to show them the right road, which way to go. Or, uh, and it doesn't have to really be the right road, uh, road, but a road or a path that they can have and they can choose. Uh, just show them the techniques and the style, just like Emilio did with me. Uh, Emilio stated, you know, Abe, I don't like your, wa I don't like watercolor stuff, but I like your subject matter. I like what you think and how you're creative. That's the same way that I want to do with a lot of these young people is in working with them, is showing them that, you know, it doesn't matter how, what media that they use or their styles. And sometimes I do get caught up on, and I have critiqued and, and, and gave bad reference, but then I take it back and I says, wait a minute, I was wrong. These young people need that chance to develop, need that chance to create, need that chance to express. And today's society does not really give them that chance. They say they do, but they don't. They only do it if they're going to make a profit off of it. This, this is not for profit. This is for, uh, for them to be able to express themselves, to uh, move forward. Uh, there are great young artists like uh, Ty Wynn, uh, of course, James here, uh, Brianna Negret, Roger Reyes, uh, there, and more. And there's a lot more young people, Donat Sin. These, all these young people, to give them a break to show them how to organize gallery shows, to show them how to work and deal with murals, and to show them to, uh, uh, you know, the colors and, and to teach others. So that way that they can go on as when they get older, to teach others and other young people. So my goal in this is, for the whole thing, is, is to see, well, my goal is being reached by this young man, James Rocha. And that's one example. Out of a thousand, if I get one, that's success. So if there's two or three uh, and, and working with these youth and young people and showing their creativity and their intelligence on there, they're not dumb, they're not stupid. They're smart and intelligent young people. Uh, I like to say thank you, James, for including me. And I do appreciate it. Uh, you're doing a fantastic job. 
uh, you know, with my years of, uh, of uh, artwork and activism, I, what I've seen, they're doing a really good job. And there's a lot of other young people that I'd like to see get up there and do some good work also. Uh, and uh, you know, like Katrina Mena also uh, and Brianna. But, uh, you know, uh, thank you. You're welcome. Okay.